don't need to grow fruit inside, Bob Flowerdew grows all his outside in the garden. Last year we saw how I prepared a new piece of ground with old carpet and plastic and then grew some vegetables there, but we could use the same area for fruit. In fact, a fruit garden is ideal for those with only a little space, little time or money. You see, fruit's easy to look after and maintain once it's in, and it's easy to process and store, and it's nutritious. And after all, what would you rather eat? More turnips or more strawberries? So I'm going to make a fruit garden out of this gardener's world plot in my orchard. I've already removed the carpet and dug it over, and I've put in the posts and wires. In many ways, this actually is very much like a typical back garden. We've got uh, gardens on either side full of weeds growing in through the fences, many trees on either side giving us some shade, and we have some plants already in this garden, limiting our choices. In particular, there are so many apple trees in and around this plot that we're unlikely to succeed with a new planting of apples. And so we're going to concentrate on soft fruits. Now, soft fruits are very quick to produce and very prolific, but they suffer badly from bird damage. So I'm going to put the more susceptible, such as raspberries and strawberries, in this area that's easy to put a net over because the wires and the posts that support the fruit will carry the net. The strawberries will go at the south end of the cage. I'm planting a number of varieties to extend the season and I'm putting raspberries to the north of the strawberries. Now, I'm actually going to put rather too many strawberry plants in but then I expect to remove some as the other fruit bushes get bigger and to leave a bit of space. Now, these ones, they're marshmallow and they're supposed to have an absolutely magnificent flavour. Now we'll just make a hole for the plant. It doesn't need to be too big because we've already dug this all over well. Mix in some compost. And if your soil's poor, then a little bone meal would help. The important thing with strawberry plants, when you're planting them, is not to put them too deep. You mustn't bury the crown. That must be at or above ground level. And whenever you've planted something, do firm it in well. You can't over firm a plant. Raspberries are another of my favourite fruits, and favourite with the birds too, so they must go in the cage. We need to make a hole for them, put some compost in, and uh, not plant them too deep, just like with the strawberries. Now what you're looking for with raspberries is a good fibrous root system and with some buds on it. Those are going to be the canes that grow next year. And this is an excellent one. Now, when planting it, make sure that you spread the roots out well. This variety is called Glen Carry and it's claimed to be one of the largest fruiting raspberries available. Now, one of the things about raspberries is they don't need quite as much um, support as the other berries and so on, and so you can use cheaper posts that don't cost as much and thinner wires. A good idea is to have two wires because then you can just twist them and they'll keep the raspberries upright for you. On the northeast side of the cage, I'm planting a tabery, which doesn't like full sun, it does better with light shade. The sunnier southwest side is a good place for a grapevine, and on the southeast end, three gooseberries will be grown as cordons. Around the cage, I'll also be planting red and white currants, and outside the cage, three black currants and a josta, which is like a cross between a gooseberry and a black currant. Another very popular fruit in the garden are blackberries, and uh, particularly the thornless ones, for obvious reasons. However, there is a trade-off. I'm afraid that when you have thornless plants, they tend to have lost their flavour in many cases. This one may not have done. It's from America and it's called Thorn Free. And I'm looking forward to trying it. Now, I expect you're wondering what this plastic pipe's for. Well, it's quite simple. Blackberries are long-lived plants and I'm going to train it up a rustic pole. But rustic poles don't last very long. So, the plastic pipe acts as a socket. And when it's rotted, you can put another one in. Finally, rhubarb plants are tucked into the northern corners and space is reserved for tomatoes. Yet there's still enough lawn to have a picnic on. 
And you know, all of these plants with all their productive capacity and the posts and wires, all of it came to less than 200 pounds. Now that's what you call a good deal. Now, of course, Bob was planting those plants in the autumn. And if you want to plant bare-rooted ones now, you better get your skates on because you haven't got long. Though, of course, you can always buy them in containers from the garden centre and then they can be planted at any time of the year. Well, it's a pretty busy time in the vegetable garden too and I'm just getting my onions in. And the easiest way to grow them, particularly if you've got heavy soil, is from these little bulbs called sets. Now they will swell up during the season to produce one kitchen-sized onion. You'll notice that they've got a little bit of dry skin on the top and I've actually watched sparrows pull those out of the ground. So just to defeat them, just take the tops off before you start planting them. Now, I'm growing even on my allotments in these four foot wide beds because you can get things in much closer and get bigger crops per square yard. And the onion sets you can put in as close as three inches apart each way. So you get a tremendous crop from quite a small area. Now, there's only one snag with this method, and that is that if you've got a long bed, you could walk miles. So I've made up this little bridge so you can just step over the top and finish off the row like this. And once you've finished, then you just cover over with a little bit of soil so that the bulb is probably just poking out. It doesn't matter if you bury them just a little bit. Now, there are all sorts of uh, vegetables that can be sown outside in the open ground now, provided your soil is dry enough. Things like summer cabbages, summer cauliflowers, turnips, beetroots, carrots, lettuces, all sorts of things which I've already got going underneath my cloche. Now this has to be the cheapest cloche in the world and it's ideal for allotments and you can see there's already quite a lot of stuff growing here. I've got good radishes, onions, peas, broad beans, and lots more there coming on. Now, this is called horticultural fleece. You can buy it from the garden centre, and to cover a four-foot wide bed, it'll cost you no more than a pound a metre run. <laughs>